Now, for the last part of the introduction, I would like to do something very, very important and very, very beautiful. I will uh, uh, show you different glances of the business ecosystem that supports uh, this great phenomenon of medical data mining. Uh, and uh, needless to say, without the business ecosystem, without money, without the private sector, none of all the things, all the wonderful things that we will see here will uh, ever exist. So I will uh, now show you the different glances very rapidly. So uh, hold on, stay tuned. It will be a wonderful journey. Because uh, we talk about money and about business, it becomes purple. Okay, first of all, <laughs> do you, do, who recognizes this, uh, this photo? Famous, uh, that's right, from a, it's, what? No, 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 no. It's, okay. Don't remember, it's from Breaking Bad. Uh, these guys uh, sit on tons, just on piles of dollars. Okay, and actually, it's a, it's an article. It's the <laughs> opening picture of an article that asks the question: Why data scientists get paid so much? And it is based on a statistics given by LinkedIn. You know, you all know LinkedIn, right? So uh, LinkedIn has so much information about what are the most required jobs, and. The number one, for several years already in a row, the number one uh, uh, most, uh, let's say, um, appealed and the, the, the number one things that companies look for are data scientists. Not doctors, really. Not doctors. <laughs> <laughs> and they get paid a lot. It's a very, very good profession. And why? The question is why. So we will try to answer it. Okay, so one of the things that I like to say is that big data equals big money. And I will show you this kind of notion in like a mechanism that I call breaking news. And during the uh, course, um, uh, almost every week, we will have a session on breaking news. And I'll show you uh, some of the recent advances and recent publications from, the, uh, from this space. And as I said in the beginning, some of the things that I will show you in this course haven't been published yet. Okay, so it's really up to date, it's very up to date. Right now I like limited myself to the past six months. Also with some caveats uh, if they were important. What is the method? So, first of all, uh, where to look for information. So, I'm connected to these information, to these magazines, to these news sources, and all of them, as you can see, are general, generic uh, newspapers, okay? It's not for medicine, it's not for AI, it's not for data mining, it's just general public newspapers. So, VentureBeat and TechCrunch and ReadWideWeb are the three most uh, popular uh, business magazines or tech magazines uh, in the world. <coughs> the Marker, you know, uh, in Israel it's the, um, I think, the most popular uh, economics uh, newspaper. Geek Time is the most popular uh, tech paper or tech magazine in Israel. And TED, anyone, uh, everyone knows TED, right? So these are the sources that I take and how, what is the method? I use Algorithms, exactly. NLP algorithms, text mining algorithms, in order to find uh, articles uh, that will be of interest to us. But I just, I'm not just, you know, I cannot just tell the algorithm, give me something that I'm interested at. I need to be more specific and give some kind of focal points. So this is like a map that I created. And during the course, I will show you um, a, in the breaking news sessions, news, people, uh, news uh, pieces about these uh, keywords or about these concepts. OK, so let's begin. First of all, we, we said that big data equals big money. Let's see big names. 
Uh, sorry, let's begin with just a bit about the industry altogether that it is at the core of this map. And I began to do this process in, uh, I think, about five or six or seven years ago. And then that led, uh, enabled me to see a trend. So this piece, as you can see, is from 2213. Uh, and it says that uh, Flatiron Health raises $8 million from Google Ventures. Google is not a medical company, but still Google invested in uh, Flatiron Health uh, to build an intelligent data platform for oncology. So it, is, it uses machine learning for specifically for oncology data set. Never mind that company, what, what is more important is the trend. So that was 2013, and then this is on 2016. I don't know if you can see, Google Venture leads to the same company, this time $130 million in Series B, in the next uh, fundraising, uh, in the cancer data startup Flatiron Health. So you can see a nice trend. Then um, another uh, trend that I noticed, that was in 2011. One in 20 US physicians, now in 2011, uh, on the doctors only social network, um, it's called Doximity. I don't know if you've heard about Doximity. Doximity is like a LinkedIn for doctors. So one, all out, one in 20 US doctors is connected to that LinkedIn for doctors. But then again, just a few years afterwards, that this is 2014, another piece, says that 40% of US doctors are already signed on Doximity. Hmm. So I said, OK, we begin to see a trend here. And there are plenty of examples like this I cannot show you. Um, even not 10% uh, of it. So industry begins to talk about that. Industry begins to notice this trend and talk about uh, uh, the use of artificial intelligence in medicine. And the idea is that it's not just taking jobs, as people may fear, it saves lives. And there's nothing more noble than the use of artificial intelligence in medicine. I always say, that there's also nothing more interesting than the use of uh, uh, than the, that use of artificial intelligence in medicine. It's noble and it's very very interesting. Another thing, AI. Another piece, a very nice article. AI could help solve the world's healthcare problems at scale. Okay, so this is like one solution that can help solve many problems in the world at scale, the, because everything in computers can be very easily copy-paste to other computers, then it means that if we solve the problem in one side of the world, we can proliferate it and solve it in many other sides of the world. Major medical associations, those conservative medical associations, now back AI project for patient diagnosis and specialist care. By the way, here, many of these uh, articles that I'll show you, just the headlines, are just for the past few months. So this is from August 2017. Cleveland Clinic, very famous, uh, joins uh, another company, Customers Network to Accelerate Precision Medicine. Precision Medicine is a term that was uh, uh, pushed by the Obama administration that talks about all those things of making use of big data, of artificial intelligence, machine learning, data mining. They call it precision medicine because at the end of the day, the goal is to make medicine more precise. So we call this term precision medicine. Many times this inter industry is, is named precision medicine. Tiber Health wants to solve the world's doctor shortage. There's, everyone knows that there's a big shortage, uh, short, uh, shortage of uh, doctors around the world. I can tell you <laughs> a very nice uh, joke about it. Uh, do you know what is Singularity University? Have you heard about this institution? Yeah. Yes. It's a, a, like a famous uh, um, institution or university 
uh, in the Silicon Valley that gives um, um, usually it's not like a university for bachelor degree or, or PhD it's, it's just for uh, advanced studies uh, and they do many conferences all around the world I participated in one conference in Poland out of all people places and I was I gave a talk and then I was invited to participate in a panel about AI in medicine and then uh, the host the moderator of the panel said that um, um, in Poland he was Polish he said that in Poland they have a severe uh, shortage, shortage of doctors and then different people talked and one of the persons said uh, described a certain uh, AI application uh, that says uh, that looks over patient data over time and he says that you know this is much much more um, thorough evaluation of patients record than the five minutes that a patient in this case in the US can sit in the in the with the patient the five minutes that he has to sit with the patient and go over his file and then the moderator said the polish moderator said you know in poland we don't spend uh, five minutes with the patient the statistic says here that it's 15 minutes and then i said okay so they, maybe this is the reason you have such a severe shortage <laughs> of uh, doctors uh, anyway but this is a real problem it's really a problem and of course uh, the industry is trying to solve that problem with different ai tools one of them is google and google had a, a um, some kind of a um, accelerator for artificial intelligence startups because google is an artificial intelligence company so they have this accelerator for it's like uh, you say uh, greenhouse right a greenhouse for young startups focused on artificial intelligence however they recently took that accelerator and pushed it to the uh, field of med tech, as they call it, of medical technology. So you can see here the two uh, disciplines converge. So they are not only use AI a lot and promote AI a lot, but also medicine a lot, and also the combination of artificial intelligence in medicine. This is Google, which is surely an industry leader. Okay, let's now move to more very interesting big names and see how many different people and different companies are attracted to this field. So you can see here, Mark Zuckerberg is going to invest from his own money three billion dollars to cure disease. Why? First, because he can. <laughs> and, and certainly because this is, again, this is uh, the, no, the most noble use of money. So here he, he shows how many um, um, money he puts in different sectors and using, of course, technology. Facebook, at the end of the day, is a technology company. He is a technology person. Sean Parker, I don't know if you know him, he was also one of the uh, uh, founders of uh, Facebook, but before that he created uh, like music sharing app that was very popular. He's also a billionaire and he invested in cancer research. This is Sean Parker, very important or very famous uh, tech stars, we can call them. Microsoft wants to crack the cancer code using artificial intelligence. Microsoft! It's not that they solve all the viruses they have in the computers, right? <laughs> now, now they want to solve problems in the human body. Uh, Michael J. Fox, do you know? He's very famous and he suffers from Parkinson's. So he joined forces with Intel to advance uh, monitoring and treatment uh, technologies uh, for Parkinson's disease. He has the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research. Alphabet, do you know what, I, w w what company is Alphabet? Really, right? It's Google, yeah, it's the mother company of Google. So Alphabet uh, created like, uh, they have like, um, I think two or three life sciences daughter companies, Verily and, and others. Uh, now they invested $500 million uh, together with uh, Sanofi for diabetes uh, research. Google. 
diabetes. IBM, Lo and this is really new, this is uh, from August, uh, last August, IBM has launched a study on the human micro microbiome and its role in diseases. Why IBM is so interested in microbiome? Peter Thiel, uh, this is the guy that uh, created PayPal, if you know, also a big tech star, backs off offshore, offshore human testing of experiment herpes vaccine. And really, this guy is only about tech. Bill Gates, who doesn't know Bill Gates, commits 100 million to an Alzheimer fund. So many big names contributing so big money. And this is the last piece uh, in this segment. Uh, and this is uh, something uh, relatively uh, new from January this year. Amazon, JP Morgan, and uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Do you know these companies? Amazon, you do. J uh, JP Morgan, probably you know. It's a very big bank. Uh, Ber uh, Berkshire Hathaway, it's like a conglomerate uh, of Warren Buffett, okay, that controls half of America or something like that. Uh, and they build their own healthcare company um, for their employees, but also for other people uh, based only or mainly on technology and on algorithms. And Amazon is the leader in that sense of technology. So you see many big names, many big companies. Let's now focus on one company, one of my favorites. This is Apple. They do so, so great stuff. And I think they are today the number one company in the world, the richest company in the world, right? Okay, so it was 2015 uh, when it was published that the Apple Watch saved the teen's life and put Apple's health focus in the spotlight. Uh, so Apple Watch, like I wear, uh, there was a 16 years, years old a boy that uh, used just to see his uh, pulse in the Apple Watch. At some point he saw that there was a big change in pulse and it continued for several days. But he felt fine. But still, because of that, he went to the doctor and then they uh, made more thorough, of course, examinations and they really discovered something that was very dangerous and they saved that, uh, that boy's life. And that was just because a consumer product that is sold by the millions and um, has a, an amazing potential. But this is only the beginning. Now, a recent study from November last year, last November, says that the Apple Watch can accurately detect hypertension and sleep apnea and, uh, that the, uh, this study suggests. Uh, so because of, and, and that technology that measure our heartbeat and other heart related mo uh, uh, parameters receives so much data, so rich data, 24-7 that we, that we know that in this data, in this kind of time series, like I showed you before, it encompasses so much information and some kind of, of hints about what's wrong with your body. It's very similar to what happens with your car when you go to the mechanics, mm -hmm. right? So if an experienced mechanic will listen to a certain noise that the, the car makes and will say, oh, it's the carburetor or something like that, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean that he saw the carburetor or, or, uh, or acknowledged what's wrong there, but he got some kind of hints, some kind of predictors about what's wrong. So this is what uh, this study suggests. Apple and Stanford, uh, Apple and Stanford University uh, studies uh, uses um, uh, the study uses new Apple Watch app to detect abnormal heart rhythms. Okay, so it's scientific. The Apple Watch can detect diabetes with 85% accuracy. Just think about it. If all people in the world would wear Apple Watch, okay, and we would be able to detect diabetes and other problems beforehand, how great would that be? Uh, EKG heart reader, okay, so that sensor that they have in the Apple Watch will become more and more sophisticated also from the hardware point of view, not only from the data uh, mining point of view. 
and their goal is to gather all your medical record in what they call the health app. I don't know uh, how many of you uh, know and have uh, this amazing machine, but you have a health, health app that uh, can store all your uh, medical records. Uh, and uh, what this uh, article says, uh, this is from September, is that uh, here uh, Apple is rumored to be working on a sensor who would detect a uh, glucose levels. Glucose level just by wearing the watch 24 7. Just not the time that it uh, needs to be recharged, <laughs> okay? But other than that, you can measure your own glucose level all the time. That's amazing. Uh, and uh, now, from the business perspective, an uh, uh, insurance company in the US, when you make a policy, they give you Apple Watch. So Apple Watch is sold together with the insurance. Okay, it's a paradigm shift. You just don't just get insurance, you also get a consumer product. And it's not only that Apple specifically, it enables, and this is something that Apple doesn't like to do, uh, it enables other third-party companies to develop other appliances that hook, that connect to the Apple Watch uh, to uh, um, f some kind of accessories to measure things that the Apple Watch itself uh, does not currently measure. Okay, so that was the biggest company in the world. Now let's go to the best state in the world, Israel. And you know that Israel, first of all, is a startup nation, everyone knows that, but also a world superpower in the field of biomedical informatics and specifically in the medical data mining. So let's see some example here, and I'm sorry, some of the slides are in Hebrew. Do you know K? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, yeah, Maccabi uh, uses it, and this is a chatbot that uh, people can uh, chat with like a virtual agent, tell them uh, uh, about their uh, medical situation, and then the chatbot asks you a question, and you type in, it's like a consulting on a, on a text message or WhatsApp with a doctor, right? That's the idea. So it's a conversational experience, and now uh, it's an Israeli company, and their first uh, client is uh, Maccabi, the health organization Maccabi, which is very, very big. Uh, Medigate, all the companies that I will show you now are Israeli. Medigate announces 5.3 million seed round to protect connected medical devices from pandemic cyber attacks. We know that uh, also Israel is superpower in cyber security and many medical devices that are now connected to the, uh, to the internet can be hacked and uh, they are different, and I'll show you in the encryption uh, chapter. We know today about many casualties, many actual deaths that were caused by biohackers, by hackers who controlled, who penetrated pacemakers and other devices and made and killed people. So uh, cybersecurity from Israel is uh, uh, raised a lot of money, $5.3 million just in a seed round uh, to uh, protect such devices. Zebra Medical, do you know Zebra Medical? Have you heard about them? They um, use AI to replace their radiologist. Uh, now they are, uh, this uh, article says that they are connected or they are combined in the uh, Google solution for health institutions. So Google is a big vendor of IT solutions to health institutions, hospitals and clinics. And now Zebra Medical, an Israeli company, S began uh, w was able to be combined in the suite that Google offers. That's an amazing achievement. A very nice company raised 11 million dollars, much more. <coughs> uh, six overseas, six that gives you that enables you to with uh, the iPhone makes an eye scan. And another company, in this case, 12 millions, Healthy IO. Uh, makes you uh, use the smartphone to take pictures of your urine and in that case make <laughs> yes yes make a urine test right 
Okay, now it was just the beginning. Me made raised 30 million dollars uh, to make better predictions or better uh, uh, medical analysis. Rescue Dose uh, makes robots and this is uh, something that again is beyond just the medical data mining or beyond the software. It's also hardware that made robots to, uh, to make uh, drugs in a personalized way. So the robot will make the drug, will produce the drug uh, or the cocktail of the drugs just for uh, each and every individual person. And this is maybe is the reason why a company like Merck uh, created a lab here in Israel with the investment of 20 million euros uh, for Israeli companies in this field. Now if that overview uh, looks like uh, everything was invented already and there's no uh, room for innovation, it is absolutely not the case. There's still many more rooms for your startups. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Dr. VR uh, raised two uh, million dollars for another field very interesting, which is virtual reality. Okay, so virtual reality, you know what is virtual reality, right? So uh, it's uh, uh, in the field of uh, uh, physiotherapeutics. Uh, and um, another field that is very futuristic, have you heard about blockchain? Do you know what is blockchain? Okay, so it's like a new way to store information in the world. And now this Israeli company called Proofwork aims to decentralize medical data by using the blockchain uh, technology. So this is Israeli. Now we will jump in this very brief overview to the field that we must uh, not neglect, which is sensors. So this is a very mobile sensor, very ancient mobile sensor. That maybe was the first one. Uh, there's a very famous work by Eric J. Topol, uh, who started use, uh, using many other medical sensors and promoting them. Uh, this is a nice, uh, this is a vaporizer with a GPS on top of it. Why is it good? Because of data mining. Because now we can see in a very global, yes, in a very global look, all the places in the, in the space, right, uh, that people use this vaporizer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a, a, the new standard, right? Uh, so doctors have it in uh, New York, I think that was the first place that it was given to doctors. It's a, like a mini handheld ultrasound device. It's the new stethoscope. Uh, as you can see here, uh, in the right, in the iPhone or in the smartphone of the physician, uh, he can really receive many uh, vital signs in real time. Minimization is another important factor. Uh, hardware minimization, halter that used to be something like that. Now it's just a, a slip in this size that you can put on your uh, belly and get very good readings on your smartphones. This is all thanks to minimizations of very, very small chips that are very powerful. And there's a study that says that really uh, these kinds of uh, devices, the wearables as we call them, and it's, uh, you know, the Apple Watch and Fitbit and other Samsung products, they are really uh, the future of, uh, of sensors. Fitbit, do you know Fitbit? It's like, yeah, braces. Uh, teams up with uh, Dexcom uh, for glucose monitoring. Uh, and that's amazing because this is a very, very popular device. Now it will measure glucose level. And the government, the US government is now handing 10,000 free Fitbits to uh, research in precision medicine. So it's a really a uh, serious move. It's not just you know uh, um, a, a bizarre story. It's it's something very very serious. Another uh, company created a watch that can measure blood pressure. We all know how important it is, and it's not that it will uh, people will measure it maybe once every two or three years. Now 
it will be measured 24-7. That's amazing. Healthy I.O. Uh, turns your smartphone into a clinical grade medical testing device. So it's really a clinical grade. It's not a joke. It's something very, very serious. And whenever we need to go to the blood, we can do that. There's a hardware for that. So it's a hardware that you can have at your, in your home and it can measure the blood and there are different chemical reactions there that uh, not only take your blood but also uh, measure different uh, variables in it at the comfort of your home. And we all know the pills that uh, take uh, photos of our uh, uh, guts. Uh, now they become more and more um, um, advanced. They become robots, not just cameras. They become robots. So we can swallow a robot that will decide what he wants, he, it wants to do in there. And se se some of the sensors are not just machines, they can be even tattoos. Tattoos that will be stuck in our skin for life. This is where technology is going. And because this is a very innovative field, there's a very big um, support of the startup community and the startup scene. So I don't know if you know, uh, Y Combinator is the number one uh, uh, accelerator for startups in the world. It is based on the Silicon Valley. It supports many startups and it, c it is now launching a biotech uh, truck just uh, uh, for biotech companies. Uh, I can say very happily that also my company was in Y Combinator. It's a, it is a very big success. Startup fundraising and exits look bullish. You know what is bullish, right? Like very optimistic for bio and health because there are so much money, so much fundraising. And there are uh, companies that, startup companies that help other startup companies to, uh, address many of the problems and challenges uh, in this uh, uh, voyage. One of them is to get FDA compliance. So there are, yes, so there are companies that help you get the FDA compliance. And uh, other companies that help you protect your technology because we are talking about consumer products so they can help you uh, with technology and legal uh, means protect your AI edge. And really investors bet big on, NI, on AI for health diagnostics. This is one of the hottest spaces in the field. And here is an example, Anderson Horowitz. This is one of the greatest or the biggest venture capital firms in the world. It uh, has a new $450 million fund just for bio, just for medtech. And we have the Israeli representative. Uh, there's a VC, a venture capital firm called Our Crowd. They opened like a daughter company or a daughter fund called Cure. And they invest only in, uh, in um, bio uh, companies. And I would say also that uh, also my company was invested by uh, Our Crowd. So about money. Do you want to see some stuff, some real figures? It's not uh, that I will tell you how to raise money. I'm not sure that I know the answer to that, but I I'll show you just what other people did. So Univ uh, Univifi uh, raises six millions to get to better predict IVF success rate using machine learning, six million dollars. These guys, you see very young guys, they raised $6.7 million to invest in recruitment and research based on medical technology using machine learning. 98.6 raises $19.5 million in Series B funding for community care platform. It's a, like a social network for community care using machine learning algorithms. Page AI raises $25 million for cancer detection powered by computer vision. Okay, we go out, we go up. Health IQ raises 34.6 million for life insurance for healthy people. The idea is that this life insurance 
is based on your medical record in a way that has never seen before, so it is much more competitive than any other health insurance company. Big money. Quartet raises $40 million in Series C to help, to help healthcare providers collaborate on patient care. This is just a communication platform for doctors. Dr. Lieb raises another $42 million for its medical care scheduling service just to schedule appointments at doctors, $42 million. Berlin, Ada Health raises $47 million for global expense of, of its AI-driven medical app. Okay, now the serious money. Sequoia pa Capital in China, uh, they have a branch in China, leads 240 million investment in a company called Wixi, which is an AI-powered genomics platform. Okay, it's not uh, only in, in uh, phenotypic data, it's also for genomics data. Roviant, which creates companies around abundant drugs, okay? They take abundant drugs that failed clinical trials and using AI, they try to, um, to uh, invest in them. They raised $1.1 billion from SoftBank, another very big bank, not related to medicine, but they invested in that. And lastly, for this introduction, social media. We cannot not mention that. Now people, uh, and I think I told you that also last week, uh, they tweet and they share posts about their medical uh, situations, and then there are other companies and research labs that read that these tweets with uh, text mining algorithms, and they can track outbreaks. And here a study revealed that a, a, um, Twitter were able to reveal epidemics two weeks before health officials were able to do that. And you can see this case in HIV, you can even see it uh, on the map. And study predicts that growing use of social media in healthcare for people, we can like this phenomenon or not, but this is reality, people look for information for medical advice on social media. And many algorithms read our profiles and def determine different things about us, from our sexual orientation to uh, uh, even mental illnesses, okay? Just by looking at our Facebook profile. And of course, there is a dilemma here, whether we want medical breakthroughs or privacy. And what, what uh, reality shows here, that people acknowledge that for medical breakthroughs, they should forgive some of their privacy. So they share it uh, in social media. And that ends with a very nice article that I read, with a, a very nice notion that you, the patient, you are now data and your doctors are becoming software. So all this ecosystem and all these companies, software companies, are now the number one warrior in the space of medicine. And this is something that is going to change medicine as we know it. All right, so thank you very much, you very much. and <laughs> thanks. And uh, from next week, we begin with the real algorithms. So see you in a week. Yeah.